I did send a little. So I sent a little note to Mary yesterday, a little text, wishing her a good trip and happy findings and all that. So um, and told her, I can't remember what all I said, but, and, you know, be sure to come back and tell us all of this. <laughs> We're dying to hear what could happen. Yeah. Hello, Mary. Yeah. Hi, Mary. <laughs> Hi, Mary. So should so, I arrange, given that for Michaela for next week, should I arrange for her to start at like, you know, one thirty or quarter of two or two so that we can get Mary's story? Um, I don't know, maybe. Huh? Well, I had Caspian start about one thirty, So it gave us a chance to do our Q&A or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I want to always it. do it later, after. I don't know, it depends. Maybe we should check with uh, Mary and see how yeah. much she thinks she has to tell us. Yeah. She might have just kind of gotten home and begun to get through yeah, it. She might have just gone in, got it, and got out, and then, you know, it wasn't a... Yeah, I don't remember how long she was there. She left Wednesday. I think she's coming back Monday. Yeah, a little yeah. under a week. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it was a huge espionage of, event as much as I want it to be. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, I we're, we're, we're making get. fun out of it. <laughs> what she gets as much as knowing how she got it oh yeah yeah, Ooh. yeah. she sneaks it out with this maybe we'll check in she with her in the pockets that she can... yeah, but know. you're right we don't want Michaela just sitting there going through she'll go you guys are what the heck What's, yeah what, is, what cult has my mom joined <laughs> <laughs> so, Who are anyway. these people <laughs> okay so um this is a day that we, we do our uh, show and tell, and then it was sort of not planned. So the idea is if somebody had something, great, we'll work on it. I did come up with a topic, should we need it? Um, yeah. But it's a topic that can definitely wait also. So, but I need to go get a drop, another drop, and then I'm done for a while. So I'm going to leave get that drop and I'll be right back. Um, be right here. You'll be right. See? Your drop's timer is done. <laughs> Alexa, That's so cool. Stop. Huh? That's so cool. Yeah. yeah, I'll be right back. Hey, Alexa. Tell us a joke. Did she mute us? <laughs> Alexa, repeat. No, Alexa, tell us a joke. What kind of socks does it? Huh, what kind of socks does a pirate wear? Argyles. Oh. <laughs> That's what I do when I can't find my phone. It's sitting on my phone. Is it doing yours too? Yeah. Can we get Alexis talking to each other? Alexa, stop. What's your saying? Started doing jokes and then it was doing something else. I have Surrey, so I don't have Alexa. Uh, so Surrey. Hey Surrey. Tell me a joke. Alexa, stop. I'm not sure I understand. Now you sit off my Siri. But I'm delighted. <laughs> A burglar stole all my lamps. I should be upset, but I'm delighted. <laughs> nice. But that's what I do when I can't find my phone. Like fun new colors. Yeah, I see that up there. It looks so nice. great. You should be on, you need to go on the news for something. So they could do a room raider. Have you seen room raider? on yeah. a Twitter account. That anytime somebody's in the news, and of course everybody's recording from home. So people, they take these screenshots of the person Oh, and, and rate the and rate the room. So they talk about the lighting, the colors, you know, more visual effect, change the angle. And then you'll see the, the people, the uh, newscasters and the people they're interviewing will be like, I got a room reader. I got seven out of 10. I got to get, <laughs> you know, it's just funny. My, my mission in life is to or keep, just... out, keep out of the news. <laughs> I was in it enough in all the jobs I had. Well, I will just... try. I will try to to make sure that somebody I'll do something in life and then they'll say we talked to one of her neighbors <laughs> yeah oh god no we talked to her neighbor Tamberly, if that's her real name 
being interviewed by Felix Cortez, where there's like a foot and a half difference in height. <laughs> like, that's no, funny. no, 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 no. Name we knew her when she was staying. We knew her when she was no, saying, no. and then we had, we interviewed Cindy Stanford. No. <laughs> Let's no more. We were just talking about pretty uh, Tamberly's room looks with the with the colors in the background. That's my now. new. That's for my new weaving class. Are these four? So you finished the last project you were working on. Hey, Max. Yes, I did, and now I'm taking a, a little three week online class in gradients, and so those are going to be oh part so of a set of napkins. You can't start a project and stop it in the middle of the way, right? You have to finish, right? Actually, you can. You, you you can stop it and take it off the loom if you do it right and put on something else and then put it back on. It seems like that'd be quite an event. Yeah, 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 yeah. I should have done that when I had a 15 yard warp on it for like three years that I was so bored doing. 15 yards is a lot of uh, fish towels. A gradient. Yeah. So Dirty, what have you been doing? Uh, okay, well, I thought, I was hoping it was somewhat genealogy related. I was going to go to the Wells Fargo South Main Bank with my parents that came up today to Salinas there at the ranch. But um, that was my mom on the phone. So we were gonna go to my grandparents' safe deposit box and go through it. Yes, but Your grandparents have a safe deposit box? Uh, my grandparents yeah. yeah and then you know so my yeah. mom kept it oh, that's like, cool. oh. yeah and she's like yeah I, I, I'm like well you've been in it what's in there well there's papers on it. Mm. so yeah so anyway they just got to the ranch and of course now she's like let's do it another day because there was a terrible I, I don't know there was some kind of car accident on Greenfield like by Greenfield on 101 and they left King City. So they got, they had to go, they got rerouted onto the side roads through the ag field. Anyway, it took like a very, very long time. They haven't eaten lunch. And so she can't- Blood sugar is low and she says- Yeah. I'm, so, actually, I'm waiting for a call too, so just- But if you go in there with, there you go in there and just take photos of everything. Yeah. If nothing else. Like yeah. That's what I need to remember what's in the safe deposit box. They say that is I a good idea. Remember. Take a picture of it so you at least know what's in there. They say yeah. to do this with your wallet too. Your, you know, uh, if your yeah. wallet's stolen, you want to be able to know what was in your wallet that you need to get replaced. Yeah. So to do those things. I mean, phones are amazing. I hear they make calls too. <laughs> but the good part is, is your mom was up for doing it. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. And so, okay. And then, so what else I've been doing is still like, and this is bad and I have to have more intestinal fortitude, I guess, but <laughs> um, the, the box of letters, it's like, I want to know what they say. So I, I was like scanning it, translating it, making copies. And I mean, I've decided that I'm putting them in a notebook. You know, because so here I have, you know. Oh, is that the, the translation and yeah, out and everything? Ooh, ooh I like. Except that. that they're not interesting. <laughs> I'm like, really, really. With all that trouble to hear that the weather was fine. <laughs> exactly. It's like, how are you? Elizabeth came by. She's fine. But, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's so it's been a slog, but. I just decided I'm just going to scan everything, put it in the um, viewfinder, whatever you call those, page. Oh, protector. yeah, plastic papers, yeah. Yeah. And then do them because, okay, so then I scan them, then I put them, you know, I label everything, I put it in the genealogy file that is, you know, on the Philippi side. I mean, I'm documenting everything, but my gosh, it's been a, for some reason kind of a steep curve, and you know, I'm I'm going faster, but I think still I should scan everything first. 
I, I yeah, I agree. Put, organize and, it first and put it, it in as best you can, and then try and to then you can look at them in a different light. Like you don't have to. I like actually looking at the paper. I find that really. Oh, I make a stuff. I make a copy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I may I print out a copy too. Oh, that's a good idea. So I'm not. Yeah, it just. I don't know, but Susan, honestly, this is what has saved me. That's really been a help. Is um, and it's so stupid why I wasn't enlarging it, you know? Oh, yeah. to enlarge it so you can read it on the computer. Yeah, but but that's why. But see, I only have one screen, so I can do that. But then I'm switching back and forth between, um, you know, sites. So I have the paper printed copy so I can touch it. So, you know, once I figure out what it is, then I can, you know, just look at the paper copy and I don't have to move my screen back and forth. But um, yeah, anyway, it's, it's about as good as that's gonna get. But, um, and then I emailed you where I found that picture of the street um, that my grandfather, that old letter showed that he was at- Oh, on Mills? On, yeah, Mill Street. And we're like, where is Mill Street? And then, I mean, I'm sure it would be interesting, but I can't go down every rabbit hole. You know, why would they change the name from Mill Street to New Street? You know, unless it, New was like uh, Mayor New. Or, Did they change it? Yeah. Because I was looking for Mill Street and the only thing I could find was a little street over in Rico Rossi that didn't seem right. And all no. the fire maps are just downtown and it seemed like it would have been more on the outskirts. So did you get change? my email that I sent you guys? Uh -uh. I didn't get it. Oh, <gasps> New Street? Yeah. No, so, I don't know anything oh, about that. It was a, it was a, yeah, you guys would have loved it. So somehow <laughs> I, I know. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's only been a week. I should be able to remember. So I, I looked, I, I just Googled, you know, where is Mill Street Salinas, which I know you did, Tamberly, yeah. because what you said showed up, but one was a photo from Salinas Public Library. And it was the most boring photo ever, but it said Mill, Mill Street. New Street, formerly Mill Street. Oh. So I clicked on it and it had more information. Oh yeah, no, New Street is off of market a couple blocks. It's like two, uh, two down by the right corner from us. Yeah. If, go, if, if Tamberly, if we go onto market, make a right, or Tamberly, Cindy and I, go, make a right, and you make a left at it's oh, oh my it's, gosh it's, it's like two blocks from us it's one of the ones between the um the railroad station the railroad tracks and market yeah. like across from west yeah it's yeah. really close n-e-w oh. i know and i'm like oh well great i never heard a mill now i never heard a new i'm like well i don't know why you would that's like a block no, long there's nothing on it i mean it's industrial much yeah, happy. I'm looking at the satellite vision version. Is that where the little two house. story, like a little wooden two story place is? Mm. There's some funky things back there by, by the those buildings that are on the yeah. west it's, side of the train station. Yeah, it's a little, yeah. it's kind of open, like I, they must have raised buildings. Okay. But there's oh, an there's archaeological there's consulting there. company back there. I have never heard of that. But there used to be uh, a little neighborhood there because there's a whole bunch of little tiny houses. Oh yeah, I know some what you little mean. wooden ones and some little two-story wooden ones that are left after they. Yeah, it's a little yeah. further down. Yeah, but and then oh, wow. I just happened to be on Market Street, but I there you know sometimes there's just a lot of traffic and I wasn't able yeah. to and I was on the opposite side of the we street. We could almost walk there. Is that like, the, is that like where the, the rental place is, Susan? Like no, where it's, 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 it is literally. Oh, share your screen, Susan. Oh yeah, yeah, it's okay. The, hey, we have technology <laughs> to do that these days. Okay, here's my <laughs> screen, share my screen. Okay, so here's, here's where we live right here. Right. 
Wilson? Or right now, go down. We're right here. See that blue dot's my house. Here. Okay. Here's Cindy. Here's Tamberley. So we just go down this way, go down Villa. Oh, make a right on Market, there. make a left on New. Oh, it's right where the, the new Green Phoenix auto thing is going to go in. There's a new, you know these things? Well, no, <laughs> yeah, the, no, because- Oh I know my gosh, really, the new Green Phoenix yeah, uh, auto thing is coming to town? Nobody told me, what is it? You no, know, Tour Petroleum, where it says Salinas Auto Repair and Transmission, the guy that runs Green Phoenix on Main Street, the guy who ran for mayor- Oh, yeah, yeah, is yeah. trying to do a second branch there. No idea, but look, there's an- yeah. There's an archaeological consulting company right here. I didn't know. Who <laughs> <laughs> no, knew? No, yeah, but see, I think things have been raised. That, oh yeah, because yeah. there was probably homes but back. Look at all the there. houses, though. You can tell there was stuff back there. Yeah. Wow. There's a road. But I'm going to drive down there one of these days. <laughs> well, it's it's nothing there, so I don't know. Can't but be it, exciting. What was the street address, Deirdre? Do you remember? Eight. Eight, just the number eight. What's the address on that one on the building in the back? The old house. It is 20. Um, so so this is the market. There's nothing else here. Yeah, yeah, so it was probably closer to the corner. How about that? Yeah. What a bizarre photo. I mean, that's oh. it, I looked through. <laughs> All sorts of street indexes and everything trying to. I know. Find. And it was right there. Like we probably plastered. Oh, show. Sure. Oh, the photo, the photo was photo nothing. It was like crazy. the back of a building, like just an old wood building. It was like, I don't understand how there could possibly be of any significance except that it helped yeah. us know that the name, there was a name change. And so I sent this to my parents and they said, uh, you know, my mom, and she just told me on the phone, she's like, Oh my gosh, that site had thousands of photos from Selena. So of course she like got lost in that, you know, looking at them. I, I don't know how she did it. She's like, I don't know, somehow I accidentally touched something and da, 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 but anyway. So is this the part where we're just sharing a little bit or a lot or a little more? Or whatever, more? sharing whatever I think. Oh, sharing okay. Whatever. So, um, I did look at the Monterey County Public Library um, ah. today, so I'm going to share my screen. Okay. I can't um, I have cheese. No so cheese let's see, you. how did I start out? So, because for me, the closest library is the Buena Vista Monterey County Free Library. Mm -hmm. So I looked under local history, under learn and explore, um again <laughs> there's so much stuff oh my gosh um so um and those oral histories i love those too um, anyway they've got that didn't know that's where they were at um yeah so and then they had um the newspaper collections they Oh. Even have the King City Wrestler. And oh, wow. I know, I didn't know you could look online at the current Monterey County Weekly. You don't have to go fetch the paper. The, I don't know, maybe it's free online if you go anyway, but. Um, yeah. This is the newspaper. county host, uh, library system, not. Not the city of Salinas. Oh, the Carmel it's Pine Cones. That's a that's a pretty small paper. That's nice that that's in there. Yeah, yeah. This is the county. Oh, going back to 1915. Yeah, and then had you guys heard of this Calisphere, California Sphere? I don't know. Oh. Mm -hmm. So um, I looked up that one. Did it change? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so that's California's digital collections. So this so, is this is UC's collection. That's cool. Oh, wow. okay, that's how it is. Yeah. Yeah. There is nothing here for you. What did you want? <laughs> she wants something. She tell. I don't have any cheese. So well, that I thought. Well, that's good. And then um, 
Okay, so back to the local. Then I looked um, the, let's see, archives and special collection. Oh, somewhere, you, so, okay, this was, if I had gone to directory, this was helpful. Is it gonna go there? Here we go. Um, it has an alphabetical order, all the different places that you can find um, historical stuff. Oh. And I didn't even think about it, but California State University, Monterey Bay. Yeah. Um, oh. Okay. So they, their library has Special stuff. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking of you, Susan, like how you can get your, you know, where you could deposit all this information you're getting yeah. on Angus, you know. Um, so like, who would have guessed Sam Farr and his father, their political documents yeah. are at CSU and yeah, I guess it's going to go somewhere. Yeah. Make right. Get, they don't want it in their house. Right. And, um, yeah. I remember when we got that. Yeah. Oh, so, that's right. You worked there. I don't have any. Oh, you worked at the library, Tamerly? Yes, she worked at oh, the Oh, oh, okay. Okay, so I think those were. Oh, okay. So then I was looking under, it's, I don't know, the photos. And so they're in alphabetical order. And I mean, there's, you know, I don't know how many. Oh, here I do see on the side under subject to find things. Oh, people. That might be more interesting. Um, but Buena Vista, so here's Buena Vista School. So I took a picture. Um, I, I mean, I haven't shown my mom. Oops, that's not what I wanted. How did that happen? Um, did your daughter go to Buena Vista? Oh, yeah, wait. well, my mom went to the old Buena Vista School. I was trying to make this bigger there, but that's not what it looks like now. And it says that this is 1931, although it looks, I mean, it's pretty hard to see the surroundings. Is the um, building still there? Do they use it as a Grange Hall or something, do you know? Um, they use it, the FFA has their oh, okay. animals out there. So they have, it's just a, like a two room building. Yeah, yeah. And, well, it's and like grade school and all of those, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the older and the younger. And then um, the 4-H uses it, Buena Vista 4-H. It doesn't get used a lot, but the, but the property does because uh, the Sleaze High School FFA animals are out there. But so then I'm like, oh, I wonder if my mom went to the old version as opposed to the newer version, which is still looking, old. <laughs> are we looking at the old one or the newer one? This is the old one. Okay. It doesn't look like that. Um, yeah, so it was, but you have to really know what you're looking for. And, yeah. but at but least it's in alphabetical order, right? Yeah. It is in alphabetical order, but if you're looking up, uh, Mayor, I don't know, Hartnell, I don't know, uh, some Mayor Harvey. Um, it might be not the first word. Right. So, eh, I but don't you, know. You, can you use, does their search mechanism work though? Can you just search by? Oh. Try LSL. Okay. Um, No reserve. Now I, why not? That's silly. Well, but it, it depends what record it's talking about. If you back out to results, maybe that's a broader search. Um, oh, you mean because it's on this it, item description of this one photo? I'm wondering why they're copyrighted. Why do they have oh. any watermarks on these photos? I mean, if it's a free library, wouldn't they want people to true have access to them? But it doesn't mean they own all the rights to it. They don't own the copyrights of all the books that are in the library. Well, right. true. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they can take it. 
Yeah, I don't know. Did you see some of the photos didn't have a copyright? Or they all have mm -hmm. copyright? That's a good question. <laughs> I didn't. Hmm. So no. now if you went Let's to see. advanced searched up in the top. Now they all do. So we're, oh, okay. Let me see. Alice now. That, that's going to be for the whole library site though. Oh, there you go. You are. Right. Okay. Oh, so yeah. Good. It will show up then. Huh. Okay. Oh, not very much. No, it does seem like there must be more, huh? Yeah. How about okay. the Alice sound? Mm, I don't know. The Alice sound. Oops, that was worse. Mm, okay. I went to the main page and put in Alice Allen, and it gave me three hits. And this is not the photos. It's oh, okay. three hits, three books. It's like, really? I think, so anyway, <laughs> I think Cesar Chavez's library has a whole section that's kind of mm -hmm. all related. I keep meaning to go down there and check it out. Then we had a pandemic. You know? Yeah. But, anyway, yeah, there's a lot, whatever. <laughs> okay. And, that, and that's just the, I mean, I didn't think about the county library system. Yeah. Because there's also like the giant John Steinbeck and the, the city. city. But that, the, county that's really great and as a county resident you can get borrowing rights to the county the county libraries as well as your jurisdictional city library yeah i have a card for both yeah. um have you guys ever been to baronda adobe the historical it's always closed missed that uh, field trip <laughs> oh, we, yeah we didn't i never went to that field trip but i i joined the historical group but as far as i know they haven't done anything they sent okay. me a membership card about six uh -huh. months ago and i'm thinking you know get in touch i have talents i can do stuff right <laughs> well yeah and I, and it I, doesn't mean we have to meet in person there's things that can be done but so i don't know right. what the leadership's like there right i yeah well, well I, met them, I met them at the um they had a book sale uh do you remember how they would have the book sale over at that at the train station right over by new street oh yeah it used to formerly be mill street but <laughs> and i would go, i remember going in there and they had a table and they were selling books and i was trying to talk to the people and they were like just more interested in talking to each other oh look it's oh, elizabeth hauser gallbladder surgery you weren't like, part of the club yeah i'm not oh. i wasn't i wasn't a part of the group and and i i sat and i tried to talk to people i said look we need to preserve the history of Salinas. The Wikipedia pages are not in very good shape. Um, you know, we should be making sure the Wikipedia page is in good shape for, for the history of the area. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> That's about the best thing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, you know, this thing called Wikipedia exists, right? Okay, well, you know. Maybe they didn't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I was kind of like, oh my gosh, these people, come on now. Mm. But yeah, very sad. So I said, so, oh, okay. but I joined the organization anyway, but. That was nice. Well, I have to say my 22 year old, she must've, I think she was in six, seven, oh no, middle school. So seventh, eighth grade, her and another gal through 4-H um, in Greenfield, they uh, were like Monterey County, junior leaders or whatever so it was the 100th anniversary of okay so i think it was 2013 of california 4-h in california oh. so they made a time capsule oh. and they so each club sent a picture a photograph of all the kids in their club and they put i don't know like the 4-h newsletter and what 4-h is and and any, so they took it to the historical society. So hopefully, because I, I just thought about it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot. I mean, the, the idea was like in 25 years to open it, um, you know, at a 4-H, you know, hoopla, it's 125 years, but that's where it's being stored. And so they let us in to the, 
whatever the oh the adobe not the adobe oh. the warehouse like where they have stuff that would be an awesome field trip for us what's in there oh Everything that's uh, donated probably that's not on display. Yeah, exactly. Donated, not on display. Where, where is uh, it located? Is this where the Adobe is out there by that? Yes, on or off Veranda. Oh my gosh, it's like I don't even remember stuff. But like they they want they, we have a a big wine press in the barn at the ranch that my grandfather would make wine in, and they they're like, oh yeah yeah yeah, but it's like we need help to move it like yeah. we don't have resources but apparently they don't really have resources yeah, either so. bed, somebody with a flatbed yeah well they could you know like i said you don't have to i mean you can just put out an email to your group and say hey all members of the group we have this giant wine press that would like to be donated but we do not have the labor we don't have the money to pay for it do we have volunteers who will come and with a flatbed truck and put it on and take it off right. and get it situated. I mean, it's it's a crowdsource kind of thing. Just ask. I think that there's lots of people who would be happy. Right. To, I think they're not during the pandemic, but normally. Yeah. I think they're archivist. What did it, what archivist? Uh -huh. Archivist. Maybe that's not a strong suit. The but asking for help. He's a guy. It's a. Oh. <laughs> We're recording this now. Be careful. Off oh, subject, off subject, but kind of related. This is about guys. Get it there. Um, if you have any small engines that you're wanting to get rid of, like old lawnmowers and stuff like that that you don't want anymore, Rancho Cielo, out on the east side, there's a guy that's starting a small engine repair class, looking for small engines to work oh. on. And my girlfriend had a couple up in Aromas, and they came and picked them up. They picked oh. up her gas-powered weed whacker and lawnmower, so she didn't even oh, have. Oh, what a good them. idea to have a class on that! Are they giving them back, or these are just no, like to, do to donate? So they have something to work on. Oh, okay. So if you have any that you're, you know, not wanting to the dump or something, yeah. Okay. Hmm. hmm. Well, we're gonna have construction done in our garage in a in a. Um, I've got the pod coming over in a couple weeks and. Ooh, I'm so excited! Okay. I'm gonna have my garage back. It's been like three years before since I've seen the bottom of the the garage floor. <laughs> well, the guys okay. come and look at my backyard on Thursday. That's it's right. Probably a couple months out, but I've been hauling cement and all sorts of fun stuff, digging up crap, digging up fence posts. Oh my god! Why? Digging up because I need to have my I want hardscape put in my backyard that hasn't been there, and it used to have a like a planter you know a brick planter that went all around the entire lot so uh, I knocked that all down and I've been digging it up and getting it into pieces that I can lift which is about three feet and that's it and then I found a fence post that's not from this fence and this fence is was old when we moved in here 30 <laughs> years ago wow so I'm digging down and hit cement go oh, shoot all the cement from a fence post digging that up oh lord mm -hmm. You're strong, Damerly. Wow. No, she impresses me. She stubborn. scares me. I'm worried something's going to happen to her when she's climbing on a roof. Stubborn. Oh, gosh. She doesn't tell anybody. She just says, I just spent the last six hours climbing the roof and cutting <laughs> down the tree <laughs> next door. And oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's scary. You're, you're and I'm like, it. well, we're going to find Damerly at the. <laughs> well, you should text one of us. You should tell face. somebody. <laughs> you're, going I'm on a, you're gonna do that i mean i was just up on my i i trimmed my my fruit trees i was so excited they look so much better oh my gosh and i was up on my ladder and i told mark mark i'm going up on this tall ladder to trim the root trees uh, the fruit trees could you come out and check on me <laughs> so often just to make sure i'm not dead or i didn't fall i'm like but yeah so, Tamperly, come on now also on that or train one of your cats to call 911 yeah also off topic but tree related somewhere heading south southeast from the front of my house i guess it doesn't matter south southeast is south southeast right sometime in the last probably three months a very big tree has come down and i can't figure it looks i i think it's closer than the park 
because all of a sudden from my front window in my front yard, oh. I can see Mount Toro. I have never seen Mount Toro. No, no, oh it, it, they, they just moved it there. there. Mount Toro I was just moved Toro there. Was <laughs> there. I thought it was there. I didn't know it was there. It's gravitational. And it's it's uh, what is it called? The 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 moving the tectonic of the, plates. Yeah, tectonic yeah, plates. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just happened up. to move yeah. into view now. Moved 85 degrees. Well, that's kind of cool. I mean, I'm sorry about the tree. I can't but... wait till there's snow on Toro because now I'll be yeah. able to see it from my, I've never been able to see it. And the only thing well, I could figure is it must be that um, a tree yeah. came down. So Maybe we'll have a are. Mount Toro watching party at Tamberley's. When the, yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Mary, you got to come out here and come and hang out with us. <laughs> yeah, really we'll sit great. in Tamberley's stuff. Uh, because Mount Toro is pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when you mentioned Mark, the, there was a little jog in my mind because when I dropped off those plums, you didn't see he had a book signing that night. Was that the night? Did he have a book signing? No. He's done book signings. Which one? Which oh, at the one he forgot to go to? Book and Sound. Oh, it must have been an old reminder one because he hasn't done oh, one in a while. Oh my gosh. I'm like, what? Because, okay, so do you guys get the Monterey Herald newspaper? Yeah. Okay. So, Still, and paper. Thursday, look, look. Tuesday, yeah. I think it was Tuesday. Did you see they, they had a story, local author, he wrote a story about his mom surviving, oh, I don't think I have it written down, Hiroshima. She was one of like, <gasps> Five Ooh. Caucasians oh, have lived through it. Whoa. Tuesday's paper? <laughs> I think it was Tuesday. <laughs> or Monday. Anyway, um, yeah, super crazy, interesting story. His last name is Drago, D R A G O. It's oh. Russian. His mother's parents. Anyway, somehow it was R Russian royalty and, you know, when there was a changing of the... When the revolution happened. Yeah. Yes. They, they, are they had to world. exit and they went to Japan. Now, I know like Russians who went to China. Russia to Japan, really? But to Japan. And we so her like mom in the, was... In the teens. Probably. Here it yeah. is. Yeah. Surviving Hiroshima, a young woman's story. Maybe I do remember her seeing this in the. I yeah, so I went. Here it is. Maybe lady. it was Wednesday's paper. No, that was yesterday. No. Well, whatever day I went I down to charge. Old Town Book and Sound, it was the day they're closed. There you go. So. <gasps> oh, the house collapsed on her. It, it was a crazy story, but, but, I'm like, I have to read this when I go to Tahoe. This is How did she crazy. get out of this? Wow. Oh, they would have been, they, they were, I think they were forced out of the house, uh, you know, that they were in and they thought, you know, well, this is kind of bad luck, except that if they had been in that house, they would have been dead, dead. Yeah. So, um, wow. Yeah. Uh, just anyway, little... kind of genealogy, but I thought everybody Russia had... to Japan is crazy. Yes. Yeah, you know that. So um, I thought, you know what? We, every family has some pretty right. remarkable stories. Right. Cindy, are you, are you just, you're writing about those families. Do you have some kind of amazing stories? Amazing stories. Um, I mean, just like, I just don't know. She has that one of the little girl who was murdered. Which is yeah, sad, but it's an amazing yeah, story. Well. Thankfully, it's rare. Yeah. And then and she, her family was all, uh, Pat's family was all uh, potters, right? And they immigrated right. for potting reasons. Oh, see, I bet that's super interesting. Well, that's the story. That's the half I'm working on or trying to work on. Um, yeah, that, and to me, that's really interesting because it's generational. So, you know, it's several, oh. over several generations. Um, yeah. but, I think some uh, of the stories that are told about our family also could be just interesting that are not 
just regular day. Exactly. You know, with, with like to be leaving your country and know back then, I mean, if you weren't rich, the odds of you ever going back, ever seeing your mother, your father, right. almost none. Yeah. Right. Um, right. I, I put this up on Facebook familiar. yesterday. Anything, ever, anything familiar, language, anything. Yeah. Right. That's exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another, um, speaking of history, I watched this last night. It was, in, it was kind of recommended in the paper. And I, I, I'm okay with watching movies. I just don't want to start another serial, anything that's like going to be season three or whatever. But if it's a, <laughs> you know, an hour and a half, you watch it on Netflix, done. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, you don't have to invest <laughs> a lot more time. So I watched this yesterday. It was called the dig and um, oh, yeah. it was good. really good. And it, it, um, it, um, Tamberly seen it, Deirdre yeah. seen it. Okay. Yeah, it's a good one. He said he hasn't seen it. So I can say it's an archaeological story that, I'm, that they pulled these people's life story in a little bit. Yeah. And it was 1938 in Suffolk, was really Suffolk England. And yeah. it's a true story. They, they, these mounds were on her property. And they've always wondered what these large mounds were. They knew that they were old. And so they brought in this architect, not architect, Oh, I think I have seen this where they discover under one of the mounds a uh, big pirate ship or something. Yeah, well, this is 2021. So maybe there was an older movie and I know there was a book. So this, oh. this movie just came out and oh. it, um, but that is it. They found this, this uh, ship underneath and mm -hmm. talks about, um, you know, preserving your history and, and that we're just a blip in time. And then who will remember us a thousand years from now? It was, it was really interesting um, I went afterwards and I read the Wikipedia pages around it, you know, all the different people who were there. And it turns out they, the book uh, fudged some things. And I was kind of sad because the, the, the movie is fairly true to the book and the book um, made up stuff. Like it added in this World War II pilot, you know, really attractive young man who's going to go serve in the, um, in the, as a pilot probably be dead right away because that's what happened to a lot of the pilots especially at the beginning of the war and he has a love interest with this archaeologist woman who's married and she she her husband is you know it's 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 just like a love triangle sort of in there and i thought but it was implied he was gay. gay oh yeah he was definitely yeah and she was using her as a beard but the thing is it's just none of that had to be in there it wasn't true it was just used in the story to sell the book Make and it, I thought, yeah. what? Because in, in the Wikipedia page, they said that she had, that the woman that they used, this- uh, The owner? No, not the owner, but the, the love interest, the one with the glasses, yeah. who was the um, archeologist who had the- Who was the, married to the gay guy. Yeah, yeah. So she she was a real archeologist. They made her out to be like a, like a student. Oh, that makes me mad. Now she was a I real- I felt so bad for in the story, and now I'm even mad. Yeah, she was she was a real archaeologist with a real career. Um, her husband was only a year or two older than her, and they made it sound like there was like a 15 year difference or something but in that age. Was kind of in there that you know she was she was kind of being dismissed by him yeah. because she was female, but yeah. she was educated. I think like she had written a paper or something, but it sounded like somebody was starting out in her career was so excited to be yeah. involved. And then he's like, oh, well, you're, you're, you're thin. So you'll be okay to, to yeah. be on this thing. And in truth, she really had a real career and she was an actual um, archaeologist. But, and the other thing they left out is they added in the, that the cousin, the, the sexy uh, yeah. World War II fighter airplane guy, he was running around taking photos. Well, there were photos there was three photographers, all women. They were all like working on the excavation different times, taking all these photos. So there are real photos of the event happening, but they were completely forgotten in the film and in the book because they wanted to add some role for this yeah. sexy guy to do. And, and what bugs me is that this whole story centers around this man who is a excavator who doesn't have a degree and how he was forgotten, how they, you know, the museum gets all the artifacts and completely forget about him and they give credit to other people. That was the stories of around this man. And here's the book and the movie 
forgets these for these women who were archaeolo an archaeologist and three oh photographers who worked on the so they were forgotten <laughs> completely. Oh, I have to I have to pause my I'm getting the call, so I will be. Okay. I have to say, Tom fell asleep like the first oh, really? 15 minutes of it. <laughs> he was gone. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we I, I do remember seeing this. I really do. Well, I love anything with Ray Fines in it, anyhow. So. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. Hmm. Oh, Deirdre, I am loving the Paris seamstress. Oh, good. I'm about halfway through it. It's really good. Yeah. Okay, good. I forgot that. The pair, I got to write myself a note. It's, a, it's the only way I can. Well, what is it that you especially like? Um, I think the thing that is most interesting to me is the, the explaining the juxtaposition of uh, Paris fashion to American fashion and the fashion sense and the couture versus the ready wear and all that. I think that's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Has your daughter, read? I mean, I don't know, maybe that's no. not her job. I, was, I mean, just last night I was reading because I'm not, um, like I'm not a cutter or a draper. I don't know how to do that. My daughter does, but it, it, this one explanation of the guy saying, oh, if he cut the skirt just a little off bias, not all on bias, but off bias, then it would hang evenly, but it would still have the drape and you're going, oh God, to actually understand what you're doing. Yeah. I, yeah. I know, I'm telling you, I love this book on so many levels. Yeah. You know, so maybe people who cannot, so that, I mean, maybe that would just, yeah. They would hate it, it. I don't know. know. That she what service? His, his job then is to make it happen on a flat pattern and then adjusting it so it doesn't use too much fabric and everything. How do they, uh, crazy. So it's the Paris seamstress. Yeah. And is it Prime or Netflix or? Oh, it's a book. I don't it's think a book. It's a oh, it's a but book. But it would make the most fabulous movie. It would be a fabulous yeah. movie. Yeah, okay. For our costume designer, it'd be a really fabulous oh. movie. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Huh? I wonder if I read it. But I never really, I never thought about how the effects of World War II on the couture fabric, the couture fashion industry. I knew, you know, my daughter's, one of her dreams is to write a book about the effect of World War II on wedding fashion. Oh. And the link of lack of materials or what kind of materials you can get affected how that changed wedding fashion for those years. Mm-hmm. And I never, you know, I never think that far, that deeply, <laughs> but just thinking on how, you know, the, the, the war coming up changed that whole shift of, <sighs> okay. especially Parisian fashion and what it was and what was available. And that, that was fascinating to me too. What was it? Did you just say something very fascinating? And I uh, the have to watch this video. Hmm? No, it's a book, The Paris Seamstress. I'm just about yeah. to oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just got to where now the underlying mystery story is going on. Mm. which is kind of cool, but the yeah. butler did it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll have to find that. Okay, so we should probably somehow deal with this <laughs> genealogically a little bit. We're talking better. about preserving history and finding and, and getting preserving yeah. credit to the person who should have the credit for it. There you so, go. So, okay, so we stayed on track. Deirdre, do you have any more to add? Um, just one more thing, and I okay. don't know. I know you know her, Cindy, from church. Margaret Marcroft. Sure. Okay, she just turned ninety. She has a book published. If you go on Amazon, um, oh, wait, what was it called? Um, Sweet and salty. Yeah. So she like did like her memoir. She's been taking some kind of writing class in Pacific Grove, and um, I just ordered it, but. She talks about her brother, I guess, is it her, not her, her uncles were at Cal Poly, used to be a boarding school for high school students. I, I don't know. Anyway, the, the daughter-in-law was telling me this and they had to go home during the 1918 pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so, it's kind of, you know, like there's that 
story in there because, well, you know, she wrote it during COVID because she was bored. <laughs> Is that going to be us when we're 90? <laughs> so uh, I'm like, wow. So see, we've got plenty of time, ladies, to write something. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm supposed to be writing, so someday. What's it called again? Sweet and sour? Is that what you said? Um, sweet and sour. No, sweet and salty. Oh. Salty. 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 I, I didn't think I had it right. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, and you can get it on Amazon anyway. Uh, yeah. Figured that. Okay. okay. Did you give an update? Um, no, I haven't. Talked. No. Did you give an update okay. on your. I need to just make sure you're all done. Oh, I'm done. Okay. And um, so, um, where's my. I have some notes somewhere. Just a minute. Yeah, minute. Where'd they go? There they are. Okay. So first of all, I want to remind everybody that this Saturday at 10 o'clock, the Southern California Genealogy Society is doing one of their online lectures. I sent, um, I think I sent um, emails. They're going to talk about jurisdictions, and boundaries, something like that. I sent it a few days ago. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm always talking about you know the jurisdiction that when you're looking for somebody, it's it'd be worth listening. Even if you can't do it, sign up and get the syllabus, which is usually published oh. a, a little bit ahead of time. Oh, and at least download that. But I don't recall who the speaker is, but I think it's it's not one of the A-list ones, but it's one I've heard of. So anyway, jurisdiction, big thing, big thing. Okay. Um, and Deirdre, did you get my email about tonight's topic? Yes, I emailed you back. Look, when you have time, the three of you, can you please go to your spam? And if, it's, if okay. my emails are there, unspam them so you'll get future emails. Ooh. Did you do it for the O'Grady company? No. Or did you do personal? Huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. My, my girls tell me they think that it's ultimanet.com is that it's just so, um, you know, small that, yeah. And so nobody has it. It's not like Gmail or Yahoo or right. that some places kick it out. I don't know. How long ago did you send it? Oh, this just this week. I just found something that in my spam that wasn't spam. Thank you. Oh, wait, wait. wait. I found it in my spam. Me? Mm -hmm. So I found two things. I should probably look at this more often. I will have to check my spam. Okay. <sighs> oh, that makes me crazy. Because see, I don't know. Because some people answer my email, so I know they get. You know, obviously some go through. Oh, I've seen them. Well, that's yeah, well, like why wouldn't you've got this one now? Well, why would it go to spam if I sent you, if I sent something to that email, then it should know that it's not spam. Right, because I replied to your, you know, I just hit reply. Really? Huh. Well, let's see what it says. But I, I that's odd that, that, you, that Kimberly and I both got it as spam. You let's are see. in my junk. <laughs> here it is tamberly susan mary cindy it's ultimanet.com <coughs> she probably thought we were being rude yeah yeah i just <laughs> i just thought you all weren't sorry. interested but or i don't know i just no no i always but you have written before yeah yeah Okay, let me make sure I put my, I'm going to put your address, add to contacts, done. Oh, was that what needs to be done, not unspam? Well, I did that, and oh. I'm also adding you to my contacts. Okay. But you know, I don't usually have a problem whenever I, like, send out the message, I just start typing, like, I'll start typing oh, Cindy's my, name, and then it'll pop up and says, do you want to include uh, Tamberly and, and Deirdre and Mary Seibert in this? And your name pops up on my, on my list of people who would yeah. normally receive a message <laughs> g-r-a-d-y just g-r-o apostrophe g-r-a-d-y 
Yeah, no apostrophe. That really does mess things up. Yeah. So anyway, Tamerly, to answer your question, I've heard their talk and it was interesting and it was helpful. That's how I got on the Val Maja to Chino oh, same one? Facebook. Yeah, it's the okay. same one. But they're just, you know, last time I listened to San Luis Obispo's genealogy, they did it there. And now Monterey County is doing it. Oh, okay. okay. Well, it's, it's a good talk. It's a road show. Is a road show. <laughs> which is this? Which one is this? Um, the Monterey County Genealogical Society. Actually, it's today. Yeah, um, right. But what's the topic? Um, searching for the Ticino relatives in Valmaja jurisdiction. Right. right. <laughs> jurisdiction. Yeah. Okay. I'm using my my terminology here. Oh right. <laughs> Okay, so also on my list, um, so the thing I sent for on June 19th to start County Ohio, I was sending for Catherine Kilgallen's um, probate and I haven't heard. So I finally called just a little bit ago and they said, oh, well, um, you know, we're understaffed. But let me look. She's your next on the list. We hopefully we'll get to it sometime in the sure, next, push you up next to the two next two list for <laughs> Next two or three weeks. I'm going, okay. So I'm still waiting on that. Um, wow. Um, okay, and then the eye report. So <laughs> I saw the doctor. When did I see the doctor? Relative to, oh, I had to leave early last time because I had to see the doctor. So the pressure was up with one machine and sort of okay with another machine. And this was sort of a stop gate pressure check because the pressure guy was not available, but he was available and previously scheduled for Tuesday, two days ago. And, um, so both doctors were in the room at one point. He took that pressure with three different machines and all three got different readings and oh. all three got different readings at different times. What? Yeah, okay, yeah. That does not inspire confidence in me because I go to the same. No, it's it's my. Yeah, it's super eye, super eye. It's, it's me. <laughs> it's me. She's, so, you asked if anybody had any amazing stories. It is about Cindy's eyes. Yeah. <laughs> so, they, they, they just throw out all machines that are around them. It's like a superpower. Yeah, exactly. You know, that little. So can't even power. register. It's so amazing. The little puff thing that they yeah. check your pressure on the right. routine. Yeah. They can't do it. <laughs> they can't do it. Anyway, so um, what they're going to do, because the pressure is obviously not good, I, and there's dried blood or cumulative blood, you know, because I can't see. And, although a little more light is making its way. That's great. I'm going, I'm going in Wednesday for a surgery that might be really a procedure at their, their surgery center, bandages, eye surgery. They're gonna flush out the eye because the, the thing is that the tube that lets fluid in and out or out of your eye is completely blocked by all this blood gunk and everything else. Mm -hmm. So the blood can't get out, the fluid can't get out. And so the pressure is high. And that's really bad news because that affects your optic nerve. Yeah. Why are they waiting until Wednesday? Well, I had a choice of Monday, but at Complex really badly with something that an appointment Pat has oh. that he needs to go to. So, um, and his couldn't get changed. Mm. I, I tried. So I had Monday or Wednesday. So anyway, go Wednesday. And... Um, so they're going to flush that out. And even that process could cause more bleeding. You may have to do it again. But the whole point is we got to get all that stuff out and going because putting the tube in, all the tube would do is get gunked up again. So we got to get that stuff out first. So that's what I'm doing next Wednesday. Oh, my. Hmm. That'll be my 
third surgery in five and a half months, something wow. like that. Eye surgery, yeah. Anyway, but this is this is a lot more mild, you know. So well, that's too bad, but well, you know, yes, it is too bad, but maybe it'll work. Right. Of course. So. Yeah. Get it cleaned out. Mm -hmm. So um, in the meantime, you know, I wear the patch. I, I, I a little bit more not wearing it at home, but even there, you know, I was telling Susan, all it takes is a cupboard left open and I walk right into it because I can't see mm -hmm. anything oh, right. that must out of this eye. So, and certainly when I go out and about, I'm wearing it and at night, so. Well, uh, do you wear it to home. protect your eye or to keep from using it? I'm sorry. Do you wear it to protect your eye or to keep from using it? It's to protect the, the cornea yeah. transplant. No, I can't see anything out of it to use it. I can see a little bit of light, you know, light, like they'll, they'll do a flicker test. I can see that. And I can see if I lift the eyelid for my drops, I can see bright light, you know, like a, light up in the yeah. ceiling um i can't really see the light i can see the light generated but i can't really see the fixture um and that's it well it so. makes sense if there's blood just yeah. stopped up in there how could you see any yeah no i can't so but you know like the cornea guy said the focus now is to get this pressure under control yeah. doesn't, everything else is secondary until we get that right. taken care of. So okay. that's what we're doing. So I kind of always knew I'd have problems when I got older with those eyes, this eye, these eyes. <laughs> so. <laughs> anyway, wow. um, so next Thursday when we come, I think I'll be okay. I get the impression that I should maybe Wednesday afternoon want to rest, you know, but that I, I probably at least will be good enough to be able to sit and listen and, you know, participate somewhat. Good. When Michaela's here and, and hear Mary's story too. Um, the other cool thing is I actually worked on my report some. Oh, yeah, yeah. You did say, say something like that. What, what happened? Well, I just, I, I had this to-do list and there's some things that are annoying. I keep saying, no, I'll do those, I'll do this. And I got everything else done. And so I said, okay, I'm gonna work on my report son. So I, I did, I did about 15 minutes one day and then I did, um, I don't know, about 20 minutes and that was all I could do. And then I came back and did another 20 minutes. And all I did was work on, um, this is the eight children and, and I had things kind of in a couple of different places and duplications and I cleaned all that up. So now I'm ready to go. I, I have everything about this person all together and everything about this person all together. So then I'm ready to go and add the rest that I have and make sentences and, and go from there. So hopefully I'll keep going. And I mended a hat on my sewing machine. Oh, and it only, boy. And it only took two times to thread the needle. Oh, well, there you go. Wow. And yeah, you know, 15, well, minutes, 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there actually does make a difference. It really does. Because not only are you getting something done for 15 minutes, but for a while afterwards, you're, you're thinking it through in your brain. You're, you're, you're yeah. thinking. Hmm, could I done it this way or whatever? So you so it, it stimulates you to to continue the project even though you're not physically right it's not right in front of you. Because you're mulling it. You're mulling mm -hmm. it. I know I'm doing a lot of mulling. Yeah. <laughs> it's been so a lot of mulling time. Mulling time. I mowed the lawn and mold at the same time. <laughs> okay, so. That's it for me, although in case there wasn't enough to talk about, <laughs> I, you know, we, we have plenty of thought. Um, I did have a topic which I can either introduce today or I can wait until like the week after Michaela's here. 
you know, it it's can wait. Um, did Tamberly did and Susan, did you all talk? Tamberly, you know, I'm thinking, I've just been doing the the same. I'm trying to keep away from rabbit holes and very methodically go through. Says the woman who's got brand new colors in the back because of the clashes. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, with genealogy for rabbit holes. Oh, 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 yeah. other rabbit holes are okay. Yeah, this woman is going to the, to the, so where is it you were going and taking yeah. and ripping apart men's clothing and re-dyeing them and, yeah, and stuff. making, yeah, okay, no problem. Gotcha. But I've been going and, and doing the, the census <laughs> finding and recording on all the family groups. And I'm back to, oh, on, my dad's side of family back to most of the third great grandparents. Wow. So going through and identifying and taking the time to also then write down the family and the family groups instead of saying, well, those are their kids. I'm only interested in my ancestor, but those are all links. And so going through and, and on my master sheet recording by, you know, the 1870 census, here's all the people I have and then where are they located? So I'm trying to methodically go through that and then collect any other stuff that's just coming as hints um, that I can verify to, to be able to research later. I think it's amazing, the third great grandfather was born in 1800 and he died in 1893. How Damn, hold on, seven more years. Old when you were born in 1800, it's it. You come from sturdy stock, Amberly, that's all. But yeah, it, what, but changes it's changes I'm, I'm going through and I'm seeing where the where the blanks are. And then for those, I can go through and do a deeper dig for the censuses that I'm missing or the marriage records and all that. But at least I can bring up anybody and find out at each census what state were they located in and who were the siblings and all of that. It just I'm jealous. Takes forever. This is where I, I wish I had five or six screens because no, we could add we could add a couple more. It's not yeah. hard. I've got three. <laughs> I love it. I'd never get rid of. And then I have my phone, and then I have my my laptop, so I could actually have five. Because you, you can't go from between them. Tamberly, that's really good. It's busy work, but it's going to yeah. pay off in the end. Well, it's yeah, and it's, it's you know, running into stuff that I wouldn't have necessarily uh, dug for, you know, like probates and things like that, and becoming aware of uh, numbers of children that I didn't know. You know, I didn't know that there were actually 13 kids, you know, and so just going through and chunk, a chunk, a chunk of each one and recording it. So. And you're doing this on Ancestry? Where are you mm -hmm. putting the results at? I have a spreadsheet with all the censuses. Every, every you're census. Checking them off. Everything is missing. Yeah. 1870 census. So I'm recording what's on the tick mark. So you don't have to read it. And then an, also an index then that just gives me everybody that I've got and what census they're on and what, uh, where they were. And then I'm going through and then on every family group, I have everybody in the family group and whether I have uh, birth, marriage, death, other, probate, and then what year censuses I have so that I can go and- Oh, wow. What really <laughs> aggravates me I'm is yeah. I'm, I'm such an Excel person that I never took the time to really learn how to build a relational database, which are hell anyway. And if, if I built this into a relational database, then there would be no need to ever, ever log information more than one place. And then it could post to all the different lists. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, but instead, because I don't know access and relational databases, I have to do that. And then remember to go back to this, this one. I'm but sure then, you could take a class on it. Yeah. Well, the intent though was so that I can have just a binder. This kind of came from Jana, a binder with just a quick list of everybody. So I knew what I had and what I didn't have. So if you're somewhere, you could grab those pages and say, okay, I'm going to concentrate on, I'm missing the birth certificate here and marriage here. And then the details later. So that's what I'm attempting to do. But boy, it's, um, you know, a couple hours at a time and you get through you know, maybe one person and where they were, but it, it'll be worth it in the end, I hope. Oh, it sounds like it's going to save you a lot of trouble. Um, I was so scattered just by interest saying, well, I'm not really interested in that person, or I know enough about this person. It was just, you know, bouncing around. I, I need to, I need to wrap this up. So it's something's a little more, you know, methodical. And so I can get direct, I can do proof of lines to, you know, as the first step of verifying whether what I've got in there is right. So 
That's what I'm trying. So, but you're not putting it on ancestry, right? Yeah, I'm. I am. I'm. Any of the censuses that I find, I'm logging into ancestry, and then as time allows, I go and I download those into my okay onto my computer. But it, doing it all at once, I realize I'm, I'm switching between too many screens. There's just too many steps back and forth, and it's easy to get lost. So I thought I'll grab them all on ancestry, so they'll be there. Then I can go back later and just download them all. Tamberly, remind wow. me, you've got Ohio people, uh -huh. you've got Massachusetts people, right? Early, yeah. English people. Yes, and some of the some of the um, some of the Ohio people came from New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Looks like they originally came to Massachusetts, then to New Hampshire. But then yeah. it looked like some came in through Virginia and were in North and South Carolina and came up that way. So, okay. but you know, all, every everyone but two, two of my great greats were immigrants. Okay. But everybody else has been here since squat. So <laughs> you know, there's not that kind of, there's not the challenges like Deirdre has where you're trying to deal in and for me not trying to deal in languages that i don't know either which is a whole nother yeah and susan your mother's side they're arkansas from arkansas well, Where were they, from? they will go from arkansas to um i mean they were all in they, uh, they came obviously virginia tennessee north carol north carolina south carolina mississippi Oklahoma, okay. Indian territory of, that became Oklahoma. I mean, they're family they, in all those areas, but. When did they emigrate though, do you know? Oh, they immigrated from Scotland in, well, the Finleys looks like the 16. Long time ago. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. My, my purpose is. So before Culloden. For my next topic. Culloden? Yeah, before the big, before the big exodus. They were the early Scots and not the post Culloden Scots, right? Oh, she's talking something I never heard. I don't know gibberish. It sounds like to me. She's just making up big words. Yeah, trying to. Make she it does. Up. We're recording this, and Mary's yeah, listening. And in, in. Outlander. Oh, uh, I didn't see that. Remember, <laughs> I, really, I said I earlier, that. if it's a movie that's like ninety minutes long, I can watch it and it's over, and then it's done. Um, like I read the Wikipedia um, page afterwards. <laughs> I'm, fine. I'm okay, but anything that invests more than a couple hours in Outlander is not even a start. Movie. Outlander is definitely binge worthy. Okay. Right now, <laughs> for my next like, retirement, I will start that. And particularly the topic, was, to the US, it's really interesting because a lot of it crosses over stuff that I'm finding with my family in North Carolina and, you know, getting. She was doing genealogy when she was watching it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> she was okay, doing her so, weaving, her weaving stuff. Uh, knitting, knitting. But this is why my questions is the topic I'm going to do down the line has to do with travel. And I just wanted to make sure I had all the places yeah, to okay. do. Deirdre and Mary are going to be a little different, but it's okay because there are um, points I want to make about more modern travel too. So. Anyway, okay. interesting. you're getting our interest picked. Here. Good. So it'll probably be on the what 19th. We'll probably do that. Assuming I'm not God knows where <laughs> with which doctor. But anyway. Um, FYI, 19th, I'm in Tahoe. I won't be on the, oh. that. Yeah. August 19th, you're gonna go somewhere? I know. Oh, fun. Fine. <laughs> just just fine <laughs> I'm gonna, whatever um so i have a couple things is it my oh, turn wait, no. just, just a second are you done tamberly yeah. was there you okay all right susan rock and roll oh so i have a couple things um more with the andrew stuff i did write to a woman i think i told you guys this i don't remember if i told you this or not some so jerry andrus's grandfather was a rogue apparently he, he <laughs> abandoned his family and um his name is charles andrus and so 
I was on Ancestry and some woman named Delini Porter, she had a note back from like 2011 saying, whatever happened to Charles Andrus? We don't know what happened to him. You know, he just seems to have disappeared from the family. You know, maybe someday I'll research it or something like that. So I sent her a message saying, aha, I do have an answer for you. And what it was is in a letter that um, Jerry's mother had, she was having a conversation or I can't remember if she's having a conversation with somebody in a letter or she also wrote down the family history. She, and she had her sisters do that too. She'd be like, what's our family, you know, what's the family stories or whatever. And they, and they wrote it and thankfully uh, he kept it. So in one of them, it talked about how he was this guy who abandoned his family and how he went possibly to California. He was from, I think it was Massachusetts and he was in the civil war and all these things happened. So I wrote to this woman, Delaney Porter. I said, Hey, here's what happened to the guy. I'm getting it from a family letter. And she actually wrote back, which was so nice. She's been in genealogy for a very long time doing it. It's, you know, how ancestry tells you how long they do it and how often they check mm -hmm. in and stuff. And she wrote me back. She said, good to hear from you. I am now age 92 and have stopped working on genealogy. I will print out your message and urge you to write to me. And she gave me an address if you wish to. I turned in a lot of my stuff to the Oregon Genealogical Forum here in Portland. Best regards. And that was really sweet. She wrote back. Oh, it was. Wow. So it was nice. I haven't written back to her. I don't know what I would tell her. Um, but I guess I could tell her something, I guess. Sure. When I, when I get a little more formalized, maybe I'll tell her, here's what I found. Well, I get it. better get on it. She's 92. So <laughs> well, just send her a note saying how much you appreciated. Her response she answered me. Yeah, you're and right. She probably is doesn't get a whole lot of physical mail. So okay, that's a good idea. I'll keep this on the screen. I will do that today. Um, the other things that occur to me that I as as use as usual, I use you guys as my sounding board as I'm trying to think this through because not a lot of people really understand what I'm doing or, or have the insight in it like you guys would. So so there's a couple things happening with um the Jerry Anders collection because it's just consumed my life. Uh that um you know the more and more i'm going through this the the documents and i and i've just finished 1964 oh uh the it's more it's interesting there's it, the relationships and mark has been spending a little more time with me when i'm getting it all together he'll i'll read the names and some of the letters and he'll go oh my gosh that's so and so and oh my gosh that's so and so and they're famous people that i've never heard of but mm -hmm. um some of the things that Jerry was doing is he was writing out like episode ideas for the Mr. Ed horse. You remember that show, Mr. Ed? Yeah. So he's writing, Mr. Ed does this, Mr. Ed does that. Horse, horse. Yeah, and, and different different things that happen with Mr. Ed. And I'm like, you're, you're too young. <laughs> I, you know, I'm gonna be, I'm that I am gonna go sit down and watch. I definitely I, look, I'm making a note. Listen, you, you gotta explain to Mr. Ed to Derek Reed. Do you not know Mr. Ed, Susan? Yeah, but I haven't watched it in years. But oh, they're the giving us a look like, why is, you don't know what Mr. Ed is? Deirdre? Uh, you know, I think I've like peripherally seen it. The talking horse. The, yeah, yeah, the, talk, yeah, the, the talking horse. horse. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, black and white yeah. comedy situation, yeah. a comedy yeah. of some sort. I don't, I don't remember. Fine really quality know. TV that we were raised on, by the way. Green Acres. Petty oh, Petty I loved Petty. Green Acres. Yeah. <laughs> Green really? Makers is the place to be with Zsa Zsa Gabor. Uh, <laughs> binge watch, binge watch. Um, anyway, 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 anyway no, no, no. so what, what do you it? think he actually submitted? Yeah. So what I found out, because I'm putting all the letters in chronological order, everything for that year is in chronological order, and then I'm scanning it that way. But I, I put them in order. I read them like cursory you know, not in depth, but I read some over and then I, then I go and I scan them and then I'll eventually get back to them. But he, and I have to know who's kind of what's going to happen and stuff, because I got to tag these things with like, when it's a person that comes into his life and they exchange a lot of, I was going to say emails, letters back and forth. Then I tag it with a key tag so that I'll be able to, I'll say, oh, this person's going to be more and more letters from this person. So it turns out that that um, his one of his really good friends was working on the Mr. Ed show. He's one of the lead comedian comedy wow. writers for the show. And so Jerry was just sending him suggestions. And the guy's like, dude, these are great. But, you know, well, he didn't say dude, but that was not, that was not the that was not the words they used in those days. But he's basically <laughs> saying, 
you know, we, we can't have this kind of stuff. Comedy writing is totally different from other kind of writing. So uh, you can't you can't have that kind of stuff. So, you know, we can't have any kind of ambiguity or we can't have six. We can't have sexual in a in new window or, or, you know, it's just stuff like that. So it was an interesting, com you know, having this guy saying, you know, you do, I'm the funny one. You do not have to write to me with funny stuff because <laughs> I do well, my job. Magic tricks you. Yeah. And well, these guys, I guess, are magicians. So um, that's how he knows them. And I then there was another guy, and I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a screen share that just appears like about 1963. And I said, well, who's this Snag? What is his last name? I can't think of his name. His name is Snag. But here's the screenshot you'll see is as I open this up, I'm like, what the heck is this? Can you see that? Oh, oh Jackie Gleason. Jackie Gleason. So yeah. this is another friend of his who's writing for Jackie Gleason. And he says he's going on about um, how he, you know, didn't want to, you know, Jackie Gleason made it impossible for him to turn down, you know, the snag wears, W-E-R-R-I-S is his name. He's really funny. So um, as I as I'm reading these things, I'm thinking this guy's hilarious, you know, and and there's all here's here's different I don't know different kinds of jokes or something that the, he's he's sharing with Jerry and back and forth and really oh do you see how it's changing you guys see this is what it looks like when I scan it the color uh -huh. and how it's kind of not so clear and then yeah. here's what it looks like whenever I use that. Um, photo filter on it see it's so much clearer oh, yeah. wow. so much easier to read right. and this is something that jerry came up with for a while a lot of his letters would be signed this way he would draw his hand and then he would draw a piece of paper and he'd put his name on it these people are really huh. think creatively they're certainly not something i would do but anyway so um there's all these letters dopey from this guy hmm? look how it's on your friend dopey snag <laughs> dopey snag um Oh, and he says, I doubt if there's even such a place as this uh, Long Island. I bet you made that whole thing up. Anyway, so there, there's just lots of lots, lots of um, exchanges like this with these famous um, comedy writers. And and um, it, it's it's but again, I'm I'm lost. I don't know who any of these people are. It's right. like so then I have to go down the rabbit hole going, OK, who is this guy? What did he do? He wrote he did. A, he was on a whole bunch of wrote a whole bunch of shows in the 40s and they're jill and jeep jeep and the jeep jill and the jeep or something like that i've never heard of them but but it's it's almost overwhelming because i'm a total novice i mean i understand the magic community some of the history the skeptic community definitely i understand but we haven't even touched on that yet in jerry's life we're in 1960s so it's it's hard and you know as i was telling you guys mulling it over is I'm I'm trying to understand what's going on in this in this world that's this guy's life, and yet I I it's like just dropping in on somebody's life, and they're saying and you're trying to retell their story, trying to understand their story fresh, and I, and it's I feel like there's a lot of responsibility because I got to get it. Nobody's going to do this again, so <laughs> I feel like no, so I kind of feel like I got to get it as right as I can, so. Um, I'm, I'm going through and I'm trying to, trying to, trying to take my time, but I, I also, it's, it's all over my house. So I've got to get at least through some of this stuff. Well, so, you've got four years done. This <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, a friend of mine showed me how to change the file extension. So when you have a photo, so what, when I scan these, the, the scanning software adds on a underscore zero, 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 one underscore b onto each file name which is a long character thing on a file name so he he showed me this program and he, he walked me through it and it, it was a program that shows me how to get rid of all those file names and change them in a second or two because mm -hmm. what i was doing is manually going to each one and just Ugh. clicking on the file name taking it all out changing it to what i wanted it to and and that was like, it felt like I was getting a root canal or something. I, I think I'd rather go get a root canal. It was so, after you do, you know, a hundred of those, 
Oh my yeah. gosh. So he taught me how to do that. And that saved me a lot of time. And so there's, so there's software out there for a lot of the problems that we have. Like I said, even just learning how to boost the, the color and the uh, contact uh, contrast on letters so that you can read them. And like Deirdre said earlier, just be zooming in, yeah. <laughs> but you know, you're learning as you go. So um, anyway, so that's, that's where I'm at on that. I'm at 64, 65 is a little tiny year. So I guess that's really good. Uh. The timelines helped me a lot to every time something happens, he's going, you know, I see he's right now. I think he's just went to just come home from, he flew out to New York. Then he went to Pennsylvania and Boston. I think he's going to go to Miami. I can't remember if he actually goes and he goes to Hollywood. And then he was coming to Oakland and each place he's doing performances. So it's really fun. This is what I do is same thing. When people would hire me to go someplace to go and do a lecture, I try to hit the, all the other places and I'd be like, Hey, I'm going to be in Philadelphia. I can, you know, you want to hire me to go to the next place and then they pay for my expenses and hotel there. So this is what I do. So it's, it's kind of a, I mean, I can't do it now. We're in a pandemic, but it's the same idea. Yeah. And it's, it's very exciting to see, see how he was doing it. And it's like, mine's just over email. <laughs> He's doing it by writing a freaking letter. Yeah. I'm going to be in Chicago. Is there, you know, and then they're like, here's my fee. And then they have to write back. Okay, that's fine. Are you okay with this date? And then he has to, I mean, it takes forever to do it by mail. So the other thing I wanted to show you, oh my gosh, I hope I didn't do this wrong. So hopefully you guys will say, Susan, you're just crazy. <laughs> I mean, okay, no, I know that already. Yeah, you say Susan, you're crazy. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, you hear yourself. What yeah, Mary's you're watching this right now, going, Susan, you're crazy. So <laughs> <laughs> I had written. So I'm really, I feel it's so important we preserve these people's history and to tell their stories and so on. So I wrote this Wikipedia page for another magician um, a couple of years ago. He was just on a list. It's not somebody I knew. Um, though Mark did say he had met him before. Uh, he watched one of his lectures. Um, at the Magic Castle. And so his name is Henry Gordon. I'll get this out of here. Can you see it there, yeah. you guys? Okay. So this is a Wikipedia page I just, I had rewritten. The only photos I could get uploaded were uh, these two really crappy photographs. This one right here, he's in the audience. And then this looks like a newspaper thing. It's just crap. So um, this guy was, a, he's a Canadian magician he's also in the skeptic and and he's he had a newspaper column for a very long time up in montreal and i did what i could writing the page you know but there is nothing uh, on youtube there's no photos there's there's nothing on this guy his his uh no website so it, usually you would think the I family would a, mm -hmm. is this and a skeptic no, no, no. He's not a psychic. He, we're, he's like he's like Mark Edward or myself. We're, we're the work we do on. So psychics were like his area in a lot oh, of ways. So I gave him a. You couldn't time. find all your oh, YouTube newspapers.com, Your I found newspapers.com. Well, your... I did find newspapers.com. I got that. It's all on the Wikipedia page. But there's no audio or visual of the guy. Oh. Nothing on YouTube. I mean, he's a performer. So you would think that, and he gave lots of lectures, but there's nothing. There's no no YouTube or no uh, website, nothing. So um, you have to contact a relative. Right. So it took me forever. He had two daughters and I knew their names, but I didn't know their married names. Mm -hmm. And their last name was Gordon. So Gordon is like such a common yeah. name, you know? So, so I, I was working on the Anders thing and like an idiot, I'm thinking to myself, I've got to find this, these daughters and find out what's going on. And I've been working on this, mulling it for the last few months. So I posted on Facebook the other day. I said, look, somebody must know of this person and how to get a hold of his daughters. And so we just brain people were just saying, well, I found a legacy. They found a legacy obituary for the mother, the wife of this guy. She died in 2015, I think. And then, you know, we went through it. And finally, somebody said, I uh, reached out and said, hey, I wrote to the daughter and I, she said it'd be okay to give her your email. And so I said, oh, you found the daughter. Thank you. So I wrote her a long email, but it's been about four or five days. And that's what I was thinking is I wonder if I overstepped because 
I was telling her, you know, I gave her a little background of who I am so that she will trust that, you know, I'm a fellow of the same organization he was a fellow of. So that's creds right there. So I'm not some crank, you know. And I said, I'm not raising my hand to volunteer to do your dad's, take care of your dad's legacy or anything like that. But I just really want to know, have you made a plan to protect his legacy? I mean, is there, are there photos? Are there videos? Um, is there a plan to start a website or to put his stuff out there or something? They had donated his books, like magic books. They're, they've been donated to a library that, I know, that I'm associated with back in um, Buffalo. So I know that, that his magic books are there. And then um, a neurologist I had uh, talked to is also a magician, not, not for me, not for my brain, but uh, um, somebody I talked to said that he had been reached out to by a daughter of this guy a long time ago saying, my, we want to get, we want to his stuff to go somewhere. And so he said, I'll take it. And she said, and then she wrote back saying, my mom's not ready to get rid of it yet. So that's mm -hmm. been a few years. So obviously they need, they have something. So I reached, I don't, I don't want it to go to this neurologist. He's like a no name neurologist. I'm, yeah. I'm sure he's a neurologist of great standing, but he's not a scholar or historian necessarily. He's just some guy who has a, has a clinic down in LA and um, thinks very highly of himself. I would like to have the yeah. go into a place where it's usable for other people to access. Right. So anyway, so I'm waiting on it. So I'm just telling you the story, hoping I didn't overstep, but I told her, you know, we care. Um, there's lots of people who care. And um, I hope that they're, you know, I, I wrote this Wikipedia page for your dad and I, you know, I just fell in love with him. He's just a wonderful guy. And um, I hope you know that and that you will take this for what I mean is that we need to make sure this is preserved. And I told her I would help her or I'd find somebody to help her if she needed help getting videos up or, or content yeah. up because I mean, there's people who can do that. So I'm just telling you that story because hopefully I'll hear from her in a few days. Mm -hmm. And the last thing that I wanted you guys to put in your brains so mm -hmm. that you can help me think this through is I don't own this content for Jerry Anders. This isn't mine, but whatever I kind of say we should do with it is probably they're going to take that as a, a high suggestion. So um, again, you know, the family photos and things like that, probably the physical photos should probably go to the, to the family members, if there's some that would want them and we should keep the copies for maybe some historical reason or whatever in a possible book. But the other thing I'm finding is that there's a lot of magic in these letters and documents. He wrote a lot of magic and ideas and tricks and it's, a lot of revealing of things. So they're magicians talking to another magician and that's fine to talk about magic in that way. I like how you did that, you know, you did that slide, you know, you did this thing. And um, there's a lot of discussion of it. And there's a lot of Jerry's, I think I have two boxes of just ideas he had and I haven't touched those boxes, they're just sitting there. Um, I'm just really kind of wondering, you know, when this is finally done, and this is, I don't need an answer right now, you guys, but I want you to think about it. Um, is it, magicians have a huge problem with people revealing tricks. It's, it's like a, it's like a blacklist kind of thing. So it's almost like you don't want that supposed stuff to get exposed. Right. Exactly. But he's dead. And, and there's no, there's but no, the um, mm-hmm. But the tricks aren't dead. They're passed along. Well, yeah, but some of his ideas have never come to fruition. I mean, this is boxes of stuff he never did anything with. I don't know what he what would be important, what wouldn't be important. But I would think that a magician or magicians would go, oh my God, look at these, look at this, look at all this stuff. And then they would go through it and they would take it. They may not give Jerry the credit for, for whatever it is because they just rename it. And I wouldn't know how to tell right, right, that's close right. to what he did wow. so but then again you hate to have it wasted you know you hate to have you copyright it or something so at least yeah i don't know how that works we need, but to, we need to have permission and and there's a lot of conversation like i said with other magicians who are revealing and talking about their stuff now they're probably long dead too so i i 
I want this out for historical reasons, okay? I want it to hopefully somebody write a book. I think it's important to understand this world, but I'm not, and I, I and even Mark probably, the, the quantity of content is just so much that I don't know that we could go through and say, okay, this is releasable, but not this. It's, it, what, and then, does, what does Mark think about the ethics of it? Does it make him squeamish? Well, I did find a, a letter that Jerry was involved in. Somebody was writing to him and a, a couple people had written a book exposing magic secrets. And they and the content of the letter was, these people have to be blackballed. We have to take them out of our organization. They are awful human beings and they should be like strung up. And the reason, and when I asked Mark about it, he said, it's okay for a magician to reveal his stuff and be paid for it. Like if, like they sell their lecture notes, they sell their books, they sell that, they do presentations, or if they voluntarily say, here's how I did it, that's fine. But if somebody comes along and says, here's how the trick was done, you know, like that masked magician that used to be on TV, then those people are like the scum of the earth because so they're not giving credit for it. Hmm? You can expose the trick if you're the inventor and, and they don't or have permission. They don't mind it being exposed, but they mind it being stolen and being exposed. And not given credit for it. Right. So there's there's been several letters I've seen people have written to him saying, I've, I've uh, devoured your book, you know, to Jerry. It's the, the moves you made were so amazing. I've, I, I do something similar and I want to have permission from you to be able to oh. say at my lectures in the future, this was Jerry Anders's trick and I've improved on it. And do I have your permission? So there's a lot of that. And oh. I know when Mark, when Mark performs back in the day when he used to perform a few years ago before the pandemic, I know when he gets up and he does his things, he'll say, and this is a Di Vernon thing and, and he'll do it. And so they're, they're very careful to give credit to whoever it is. If it's even just a verbal, you know, I learned this from so-and-so and, and that kind of thing. So, but now I was telling another person on a Zoom call Tuesday, kind of this, not as, not as much as I told you guys right now, but kind of this idea of I'm a little worried about, I don't know what I would release, what I wouldn't release. I don't know what makes sense, especially since the stuff is most of these people are dead. I mean, he died in 2007, so there's going to be a lot of people who aren't dead uh, yeah. once we get into the 70s and 80s and 90s. But he said, um, this person I was talking to said, you know what, you're going to probably just going to have, well, you, the organization is probably just going to release it and damned whatever happens, happens. Because this content is important to have out and you're not going to be able to really curate it to just like oh this can be released like it's like wikileaks or something you know i don't know so i'm not sure i have an answer but this is what's been going through my head a lot and also they're talking about other magicians hey, so far he's not been too it? bad hmm? would you want to protect it with you know whatever it is that gives you you know that you can't reproduce without permission and but you know as the, soon as it's out it's going to be out and there's Right, but at least you have something, and then the keeper of the permission is the is the group that owns the stuff. The, you know, the other, sort of, some sort of right. Well, the other thing I'm thinking of is if this goes into a DVD, and apparently I can get all this. It's all text, almost all. So I mean, it's almost all just little low resolution kind of. I could get it onto a DVD. Caspian says there should be, be no problem getting it into at least one DVD, maybe two, and then you release it to people who have a historical reason maybe wanting it or even if it is a magic community but it's not like here's a website go for it you guys except we're like you have to purposely say i'd like i'd like a copy of that here's 20 bucks or whatever we charge or whatever and have them sign that they won't put it on youtube or something because you know once you get it digitally to somebody it could be anywhere right i don't even know if i'd want to have somebody deal with that that seems like such a Pain. And what are you protecting if he's not around and his family's not around? Yeah, that's a good question. What am I protecting him? I, I mean, if, 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 the the, trade, if the trade doesn't mind the tricks being exposed, they just mind not getting credit. credit, then maybe it's not an issue. But if but the I, trade, if the trade doesn't want to 
have any tricks ever exposed, and that's a different set of ethics. I've written to two different organizations, and neither has written back to me. But I was asking for a historian if somebody would contact me. So yeah, I don't know if maybe I need to have a better conversation with these people. But I believe that the, the group that owns this, they've been in contact with another magic company that's supposed to be, I think, like a historical magic company that does something with documents and stuff. And they want everything. So, um, and I know David Copperfield wants everything, but David Copperfield- yeah, but he wants it for his own game. He puts it, and he also, yeah, his game. And he also puts it into his warehouse that he shows to, you know, select people. I'd rather have this for everybody. Right. That he's profiting from it. As and so I don't even know. And I don't even know if it's my responsibility. I, I, well, I, I, that's what I would say is, is that you have to be careful that you're not stepping out of bounds here. It's not yours to decide. It's whoever owns it at the moment, which is this organization. Mm -hmm. And it's theirs to decide. If you publish it without them giving you permission, then you're legally in jeopardy, Susan. Well, I think what yeah, she's right. saying is that she's that they're she's feeling that they're going to take whatever recommendation Susan gives them. Yeah, because I'll be the one the most familiar with everything. I mean, right. I can present to them saying there's a lot of magic in here. Um, you know, I've talked to these people who say that it should be okay, and I've talked to these people in the magic world who think that maybe it won't be okay, and then I've talked to these people who are practically drooling and and to get their hands on it. Mm -hmm. So. It just feels like it's a waste to have it. I mean, I don't see how I could release some without releasing all. Is basically what it's right. Saying. That that's so. But I would say be very very cautious. Well, I've got at least another six months. So just think that put it in the back of your brain and. Yeah, but this sounds like something that the organization needs a lawyer to talk over their rights and you know what they can do and not do and. All right. And yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a fascinating world. I'm, I'm just, my family looks so boring compared. To <laughs> and there's no kin, right? There are. I mean, I remember I did, I built an ancestry before I even started. That's so right. I know there are family members. They're all, there, there are, I mean. There's two daughters, right? No, no, that's Henry Gordon. This is, um, oh, okay. that's another guy. This, no, he has no children. His brother had no children, but he does have, he did have a sister who had children and those mm -hmm. children exist. So he has and nieces and nephews. Yeah, distant. And. Um, but he has yeah. technical heirs. He yeah. Technical heirs. Right. But they don't, didn't have really right. contact. I don't think, I don't think they would, they have no ownership of this. It was all given to the organization. So, who gave it to the organization? Um, the brother, Jerry's brother, who died uh, um, after him. So everything went to the brother who lived okay. in the court, and then the brother gave everything to the organization. Okay. And I think Jerry uh, also wanted it to go to the organization. I think that was like the deal. So that split that broke away their right to it. If it yeah, if it wasn't quite enough family. They would have just taken it the down. They, they would. Care. They wouldn't have kept anything. I don't think they would care. But I mean, obviously, the family stuff. Like, I think I've got a family Bible and some other stuff. Yeah. Of course, they would probably be the rightful owners to that if they want it. I don't know how I would pick which one. It should seem, sure seems like that's where that sort of stuff could go. Mm -hmm. Family photos, yeah. um, the physical copies. But, um, and that's when I wrote to this Henry Gordon woman, the, his daughter, I said, you know, I just want to know that there's something that there's some plan for this because I would hate to see a generation just take it to the dump, you know, some one of the generations just take it. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if maybe she's thinking it over to how to respond to me or if she's, she's maybe she's, uh, well, if he was born, Henry Gordon was, his daughter would be, I think in her seventies. Let's see. He was born in 1919. My dad was born in 1919, but I think his kids would be 30, born in the, the late 30s. So they'd be how old? Late 40, like 40? If, if his kids were born in 40, how old would they be now? 60, 70, 80? 
Yeah, approaching 80. Right. So maybe she's trying to talk to other family members. Yeah, I, that family. would, knowing my mom who's 84, she'd have to mull this around. And if there was a family member, you know, her kids, well, what do you think? Well, I don't know. Did you ask Aunt Sue what she thought? <laughs> you know, I mean, it all kind that of. That does make sense. Huh? If somebody asked me that now, I've got all this stuff that my uncle gave me. Right, he just picked me, or two of us to pick, and he picked me. <laughs> and best I can tell, neither of my daughters really have an interest. And then I've got three nephews. So who who the hell gets it if none of them are interested? And maybe they'll develop an interest later in life. But until then, it seems like somebody ought to at least take the shit in case somebody wants it. Maybe one of their kids or something, you know. But I, yeah, I mean, I'd be mulling. Well, that's, that's the beauty of scanning it so that it is a digital copy of it, so that if it is destroyed, at least something of, the, of it would be left. And, and same with like with Chamberlain's World War I pictures. There's a huge world of people who, would, who loved those things. We put them up on yeah, those. Regardless pages. of it being related, just having the- Yeah, just the historical site. And, and same with some of the stuff Jerry's done with photography yeah. of, the, of the base and- um, I haven't even touched his nature photography. It, it, I have it, It's like I want to get through the letters, which is 1964. But somebody may want it who's not, you know, I could see not even keeping the actual prints once they're right. digitized and they're up. And so there's no physical thing to put in somebody's back closet. And maybe like, like Deirdre showed that historical. Um, um, yeah. Some place like that would keep it. You kind of take the burden out of it when you digitize it. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Except for you've got some amazing things there, Tamberly, like that yeah. physical diary, and you've got some leather bound. Um, don't you have some uh, diplomas that are like oh, printed on lamb's wool or something? And leather, leather suede covered embossed uh, graduation ceremony programs from Ohio State from the early 20s. Yeah. So maybe if it's. Yeah. mostly scanned and then there's stuff that's can't be scanned right yeah, and if you you just if it was down to one box right and it was labeled and dated and all that then an answer one of your family members would be okay with that one box yeah yeah and 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 a whatever the technology is of the time a dvd or whatever that's in the box too and then that just gets updated as right. we change to whatever the next technology is but that might be something that would be okay to pass down and they'd be all right with it but if if somebody was this, like this jerry and stuff and they said we've got a storage locker that we're paying 60 bucks a month for for years would you like to take over paying the money for this <laughs> and it's just boxes of paper right, and right. and stuff yeah. they're gonna go to the dump you know with yeah. that yeah because yeah. it's a burden it's, it is a burden, and it is a burden. So Mark just told me today, he says, can we take all these boxes out to the garage? I go, no, something might happen to them in the garage. I don't want anything happening to them. They're gonna, he says, but they look ugly in the hallway. I'm like, well, then they're gonna look ugly in the hallway. <laughs> I want them where I can see them and know that they're okay. I don't want them in the garage where something might happen. A raccoon could get them. A raccoon, yeah. Oh so, yeah, so many things, so many things. So I want them okay, in the but, hallway where it looks crappy, but. well. I don't know if I'm playing devil's advocate here, but I, and I don't have any legal background. This is why I don't know. But if these letters, like say somebody wrote him a letter that has some kind of magic in it. I mean, they meant that letter only for him. If, right. if they're still alive and you, it goes public, isn't that kind of. That's what I was thinking too. Maybe after a certain, like with statute of limitations. Yeah, like in Wikipedia, we can't put up a picture unless it's seventy-five years old, and okay. it, without permission. Kind of like the census, right? Like the census, right? So maybe we just put it on DVDs and hope that somebody, you know, I mean, the stuff that's right yeah. now, the those drawings that I sh I was showing you before of that cartoonist. Remember that famous? I told you about the famous cartoonist. I did. I think you told me. Oh yeah. Oh, here, let me show you really quick. So this famous cartoonist put up this. Um, he did a lot of stuff from um, 
Well, hold on. Just well, what about the Magic Castle? They don't have any archival. Oh, and I got letters from him too. <laughs> I know, but that's what it seems like. like it. Yeah, it seems like there's like, a history of magic that maybe somebody would want it. Well, if somebody were wanting to write a book or something, that would be a gold mine. Yeah, because right. it's not only Jerry Andrus; it's it's all these other yeah. famous magicians that are in there mentioned and talking about, and their humor and their non-humor and and. Um, uh, I, I mean, it tells you, gives you an insight into other people because their stuff's in here too. Here, let me show you these photos. This is just, a, not photos, these are drawings. These are so interesting. And I'd never heard of them before. And Mark goes, oh my gosh, that's so-and-so. And I'm like, well, I don't know who so-and-so is. Hold on a second, you guys. I know I have three screens, but when Zoom is open, it's like everything hides the little... Yeah um things so these are okay this is a cartoonist who was a magician and here's this is this, this guy's handwriting can you see that yeah look at that in perfect block form yeah so i can't think of how to say his name but let me show you the other art so he was drawing these things for him Oh yeah, I was telling you, Tamberly, because I found them and they had this rusty paper clip right here. I got oh. because I think Jerry opened up the envelope and just left it and then put it back in the envelope. It's organ, it's humid, or you know, yeah. So high this, humidity. Is, this is hand drawings. So um <laughs> he told him, you know, to use them for you know, he said he'd be happy to draw stuff for you for whatever reason and for book titles or stuff like that. But this guy is, um, who drew this, and I found a bunch more letters from him since then. He is, what is his name? Str Mark, what is, oh, never mind, it's right here, hold on. Never mind, Mark, S-T-E-R-A-N-K-O. He was a, he was a magician and an artist that did a lot of work on, um, comic books as you can see from Whoa. his style so this is him jim i think i've heard of him well he's still alive i tried type um sending him something on face um oh that's so little i tried talking to him on twitter and he tweets yeah and he was he's got a lifetime achievement award for his he did like captain america and those wow yeah, no. Oh, he's been at the Louvre. Changed. Look at his work has been in the Louvre, Sydney Opera House. Well, how old is he though? Eighties. So he, he was, was a young 35. man when he met Jerry. He was born in thirty-eight. Oh, so he's eighty-two. Oh. Oh, well, then he's old enough to answer you. I mean, he's <laughs> young enough. Well, he was he was tweeting. So I just yeah. sent a private message and I sent a picture and I said, "Look, I just found these these drawings that were done by this tagged him and then." I don't know, but it, my point is, is that I don't know what I know because these mean nothing to me when I see right. them. Oh, this is really nice. And, and then somebody else might go, whoa. Mm -hmm. Mark says, oh, those are worth a lot. I'm like, the physical, the physical things probably would be worth more than the art that's scanned. Yeah. Excuse me, I gotta take another drop. Okay. Be back. Anyway, so I've commanded the time long enough, so that's kind of where I'm at, and I, I, I'm keeping you guys in 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 the loop of what I'm thinking, so that you'll know the stories whenever we get to. Oh, I, I don't know. You're just really brave. That's all I know. Well, I'm just scanning. I'm not brave. I'm just the reasoning that comes to me is kind of that you know the you know, the greater good wins when you're balancing the rights of the individual against the rights of the greater good, the greater good usually wins, right? Well, to me, history is just too yeah. important. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm always going to say, expose it and let's, let's let the, the dominoes fall where they fall. And because it would live. If we expose a trick, we right, but a trick. It could evaporate. Are people ever going to, if you, if the, Albany Historical Society ends up with this stuff. Are people even going to think to look there? I mean, it seems like a med 
a magician organization. I don't know. There, there's there. no archival museum. Is it well, musician museum? I she said, know. like I said, this woman told me about this one that wanted to take stuff. And so I don't know anything about this organization. She says it's a, I think it's a website devoted to the history of oh. stuff, which would seems like the natural place to go, but I don't know, you know. I, I guess I could, well, it's their decision, like I said. But you could look into that. But but you also mentioned somebody in all this donated something to the Oregon Historical Society, you said. Oh, that was, she was she was donating her genealogy she had done. Oh, her genealogy. And his was some, he was one of the, his grandfather was one of the relatives that was associated with it, so. Ah, okay. But, but that might be one, even though it's not magician, but it is organ. So the historical society or library, it's, it's in Portland, you know. That's true. So, you wait, know, if we can't find a family member to take it, maybe we can give it to the at least the family yeah. stuff to to a historical society of uh, Massachusetts or why he was Massachusetts, Wyoming, and Oregon. That's the three places that would possibly take it. But Massachusetts, I would think, have tons of stuff. Yeah, and he didn't, he, that was his early life, right? Not really his professional life. He was born in Wyoming, but the family came from Massachusetts. So he lived in Wyoming for until I think he was like six. But they all came, but a lot of the, some of the letters I have and a lot of the photos are from Massachusetts. North Adams. North Adams, yes, absolutely. And other places around there. So Where the can, hospital is actually up the hill. Did you check? <laughs> up on a hill. Yeah, McKay, they were looking at property up there. So I, and I think that I think that's still on a hill. Yeah. So if you go up the hill, that might not well, be because the town is in the valley, and then everything is you know hills. I've never been. I, I'd like to go. I'd really like to go to Boston. I'd like to go. Yeah. I have I have a group of friends that are putting trying to get a cruise together. That's all in the um, Upper Canada. Uh, Halifax and yeah. that area, Newfoundland and all that, and then it ends in Boston, and then they were going to do a t tour of Boston when it was done. I, sorry, I just shared the screen. Do you sure. see something? Uh -huh. What do you see? Monterey County genealogy. Oh, oh, okay, good. So, look, October fourteenth. What to do with all of your family stuff? Heirlooms and research. Oh. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. And it doesn't say, oh, let's see. Is it like going to be at this? The, whoever did this newsletter, to me, there were things I couldn't follow. And this link is a broken link. And I don't know what they're talking about. I mean, you know, I don't even know where to go. Like if they and left out a word. That it, it was done by margin payroll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. I mean, Monterey.org, what do you think that means? MontereyLibrary.org? Or I, 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 it looks like a legitimate link. M-O-N-T-E-R-E-Y, they spelled it right. Yeah, but. And it's a broken link, huh? No, I think it's Monterey. Oh, oh no, wait, what is this? It's probably MCFL.org. Monterey I'm sorry, I missed the beginning. What are we looking up? Oopsie, did I lose my page now? Yipes. Um, I'm looking at your email, this is great. <laughs> if if you were a psychic, I would be screenshotting that right now. Oh God, okay, <laughs> and have done so. <laughs> Here we go. Um, so this is the the Monterey County genealogy. Yeah, Did, right. is everybody a member of this that's on here? I am. Okay. Did oh. you get this newsletter? No, I didn't. Maybe it ended up in the, I don't know. I'm having trouble keeping up with my email because I can't see it very well. Oh, okay. So anyway, it says on October 14th, 2021. Yeah. What to do with all your family stuff, heirlooms and research. Oh. But I think we all kind of feel that yeah. stress. 
but it's I don't know person. where it's at because the link above it is broken. It says monterey.org slash library slash events. But oh, it's probably in Monterey County or I mean the Monterey Public Library. Possibly or, they're waiting to see what happens with COVID if it's going to be live or if it's going to be Zoom. Yeah. That's what they should have written. Right. Well, Location to be decided later or something. Normally, the meetings are at the Seaside Family History Center. In, and Noche Buena, Noche Buena Street. Yeah, off in one of the rooms there. Uh -huh. And then they were doing Zoom for all this time. And, but I didn't know whether they were still doing Zoom or not. Yeah, maybe they didn't write it because they assume everybody knows that that's, they're just going to do the same thing they've been doing the last year and a half. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe longer. Hey, I got my magic wand here. I'm <laughs> dubbing. I'm dubbing Deirdre to keep an eye on that. Okay, I'm writing it on my calendar. <laughs> What's the night? Let us know. October fourteenth. October fourteenth. I thought October it's a 7th. Thursday. Doesn't it say October seventh? Fourteenth. Oh no! 14th? Go to the right. Oh oh okay. Up above. So that's the, okay, so that's not the family history or the, it's not a Moco Jinso thing. It's the thing being presented by the Monterey Library. You mean the Family Search Library or the no. county Wait. library? Yeah, the city library. Oh, city oh. library. Except for that link doesn't. Oh. Yeah, but that's probably, it's just all things. Oh, well then I'll just go to the, the city link and 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 check out that's weird that the city is using a dot org but that's true so they use edu but, or what are known as monterey county free library when the rest of the county is dot um oh city of or ca dot is that what you mean yeah i i'm not Maybe left positive, it off. but i think that it's the city of monterey library rather okay than i will look at it County. Well, because Monterey.org is the city of Monterey's website. Okay. So that takes me to their library, it's just the events. Yeah. Are you looking okay. at it right now? I'm going in directly, not with the link. And on the events, in what's well, everything is about Car Week. Do I care? No. no oh, God, we a lot of income. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, is. anyway, you guys, I need to get going. I have got to eat and get to another Zoom call. Okay. Believe okay. Me. Um, so we managed to fill two hours. It's pretty damn Yeah, we did. Okay. And I do have a topic in mind for then the weekend, the week after Michaela. So we're okay for a couple of weeks. Okay. And, okay. and then just keep your eyes open. I think it's interesting to hear. And I feel a lot better telling you guys. I really do. Even if you don't have an answer, I feel like at least I'm explaining it. And then yeah. as I explain it, it kind of makes more sense to me. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> no, I mean, we'll that's testify true. at your trial. Will <laughs> 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 uh, you yeah, bring me better, some bread and life. butter in prison? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do, I feel no. like I'm, I, I'm formatting in my mind and I'm saying we're mulling. This is, that's what we did today was we mold. Yeah, the important thing is it's not your decision. That, <laughs> you're right. I think we should all watch Mr. Ed. <laughs> Mary, make sure you watch Mr. Ed. <laughs> Mary's going, you guys are nuts. <laughs> Your theme song, that's pretty bad when that's what my brain power is used to reserving the theme song. Da -da 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 -da. The yeah. talking Mr. Ed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wrote it down. I'm going to look for it. I'm going to have something to eat and I'm going to watch at least one. But episode. I look, I'm going to look for the Paris seamstress. So. The there things we learn. Gregory <laughs> better get on her Mr. Ed too, because it's gonna be to make <laughs> It'll be a test. I mean, I didn't know anything about it, but boy, the guy was like, Oh, we can't write about that kind of stuff. And he gives this long list of stuff he can't do and stuff, and we and you have to consider this and consider. I'm like, really? <laughs> it's just a horse talking. Uh, I think they said we've done the gimmick of this of, of this too long and we can't have him go out of town because. The money that would be used. I don't know. It's just this long thing about 
why Jerry should stop writing bits for the show. Because he doesn't a nice way of saying mind your own business. And yeah, mind your own about. business. I got other things. Let's talk magic. Uh, and Susan, there's a whole thing about the copyright issue too. Anything written before about 1920 or anything after about, I think it's 1925. It keeps going, you know, one year closer every year is copyright. Even if it's not, you know, says copyright, it's copyright. So any letters anybody wrote are copyright. Until, until what? Till now. Oh, so, so they would not be, the copyright wouldn't be released? I so don't know if any letter written prior to 1925 is free to be copied oh, and yeah. you're okay. But after 25, it might be 26 at this point. Is copyright? It's copyright. It's already copywritten, just inferred copywritten. So it and doesn't have to be a registered copyright. It's a, it doesn't have to be a registered. Correct. Copyright. Okay. It doesn't have to be registered. Does it fall so off after a certain point? No, not for seventy-two years or something. Okay, that's what I mean. So at some point, it will. I don't know. I I honestly don't know, but I think indefinitely because it sort of. The copyright laws change all the time. So it could have been to this point and then it got adjusted. So it's this point. But that's, I, I just remembered all that. I have something here somewhere. I think, I, I mean, I remember the first of every year, some books will become uncopyrighted. And right. I remember Agatha Christie's all just went, they're all, all right. the so that's, that's out. that's that thing about. So on the first, it was like the first of the year, a bunch yeah. of books would would mature. That year, so, 72 years so, yeah. so there is a certain year that after a certain year then it's so yes but anything written after that year 1925 is still copyrighted right anything written in the last 72 years is copyrighted right but every year and it changes they open another year right yeah right because it's so like, eventually it's not, it's not about a year years. It's not about a year, it's about it being 72 years old. Yeah, but this is, it's 1921 and 25 is, huh. yeah, but it's There's not, a number. That's more than 72. So, so I think they adjusted the law some too. So we need that's to look into thing. it. That's another thing to think about. Maybe I just collect all this stuff, release it to a serious historian who wants to write a book. And, I mean, I don't, but somebody does. And we just sit on it. And release if we want to release little bits of it, like maybe artwork. Oh my gosh, that sounds like way too much work. No, no, well, I don't want to be no, responsible for. But I mean, but I'll maybe right. somebody could. And then when the year is up, of whatever that year is, let's say it's a hundred years. So anything that was written in 1960 that would be in 2060, that could be fine to release or whatever. I don't. I look into it. Legally. I wouldn't be responsible. Well, and I'm not going to be around. You don't want to wait that long. Well, yeah. I mean, if you wanted to release it in bulk, but if you wanted to release bits and pieces of it, and if you're writing yeah. a book, if you're writing a book, you can have access to all this for information, and then you're not you're not producing the letter or the magic trick. You would say, you know, reading reading through all these letters, I was able to put together what the story is. So, I mean, that's how we tell historical stories all the time, right? You you. If we're telling the story of um, uh, Japanese people who were interned, that hasn't been 100 years or even 75. Right. So right. You, you wouldn't, without their permission, you can't produce the letters probably. Right. But right. you can read the letters and you can say yes, bits about the letter. Right. So his, but you can't his, quote. Right. So, well, you probably could quote bits. It depends on, no. like on well, Wikipedia, we can quote I'm, a little bit. I'm not a lawyer, but you have but to that's really the point be is, careful. So, I have to rewrite part of Pat's report because I quoted too much. Oh, yeah. So, so for historical reasons, that. these letters will be for a person who's a serious biographer. Wait, Cindy, you had to rewrite something. Why? Because I, so like there, there was a Pat's family, um, pottery burned down in a fire. And there's these wonderful sensational articles in the newspaper that I wholesale put a paragraph in mm -hmm. and that's too much. Oh, the so, newspaper got mad? No, but I 
after I'd written it, I read, I attended a class about copyright and learned oh. I can't do that. So I can, I can talk about the facts. I can put them in my own words. You can read uh, an article do, too. But I can't have this wonderful sensational paragraph. Um, so same same say, with Wikipedia. We have to, we have to be careful. There's actual um, bots like computer things that run through. And if you're using too much quoted material, then you know they'll, you'll get a notice saying, you "Oh, you guys are way ahead of me." Well, it, you just can't. In Wikipedia, you're citing it, so you would yeah. you would say some such and such, and then you would put a citation so right. somebody could go read it further. But you have to be careful that you don't overquote. It has right. to be in your own words. Kind of and then, you to freshman year of college, right? <laughs> yeah, standards on play plagiarism. And, yeah. yeah. Well, Citation and well, plagiarism really is a problem if you're not saying I got it from this person. That's the problem. It's, but still, you can't quote very much, right? So in Wikipedia, the same same thing. We have to be careful how. Yeah. We're not really worried about being sued or anything, but you have to. You're you're supposed to be telling an encyclopedic story, not a. We're not right. writing a novel, you right. know. Right. <laughs> Or a right. historical count, which is based on primary sources. We can't do that. Right. Like secondary sources. Well, see, I'm just thinking on a like human individual level here. If I had written a letter to Jerry Andrus, I don't know, say I was a girl, a classmate of his, and I was smitten with him and I don't know, you know, maybe I said something. Yeah, I don't know that no, I don't want exactly. people to see. That's exactly right. And it's also, yeah. I've got your address in there. Not that you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, so I've got every letter and I've got every, I, I don't want to block out. Oh, anything. my gosh. I don't know. Wow. So, so there's that. I think I'm, I think that I, at this moment, I'm going to, I, like you said, it's not my decision, but I think I would advise let's collect it, release it only to a, a, a serious, somebody who seriously would be doing it and not releasing it for magic reasons or anything like that and just wait on it and see what happens if we have to release bits you know a little here a little there for something we could carefully curate it and say okay this is all right you know this isn't revealing anything or but you're right i'm thinking you're about in. stuff i've written to people now i'm like oh my gosh oh, I <laughs> your family, I, now, I, I, but you're now what I was thinking is I think their family might be interested in seeing it. Like if there was your heir, you know, I would love to see stuff my parents or my grandparents wrote. That would be well, and before the world saw it. Yeah, I wouldn't want it necessarily for the world to see it. Yeah. But I would love to have it. Well, you know, I'm not private, so I would be okay with the world seeing it. But I but I you mean I, like your great grandma writing a letter to some GI and Oh that's my gosh, okay. I'm I'd be totally you. fine with that. But, but that's, that's me. I don't have any privacy issues. But see, that's different than you getting a copy of it as opposed to you writing something and publishing Correct. that. Now, that's certainly within the jurisdiction of, you know, copyright. It's no longer copyrighted. World War II, no, that would be. No. Um, not. But say somebody World wrote World one. Huh? World War One. Yeah. World War One would be okay. Somebody released letters of a, yeah. a GI in World War One. Yeah. They're released all the time. Yeah. For stories so, or whatever. But then well, usually the person releasing it is the family owner or the person who owns the letters. But right. you receiving your your family's letters is perfectly fine. It, yeah. It, it's only if you publish it that you have to worry about copyright or anything. And since I intend to publish this in the sense of distribute it to family members and, and even DNA matches, if they are wanting it, then I have to be careful to follow copyright laws. Oh my gosh. I don't want to have nightmares about this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I know. I got to eat. Like I said, I've got another okay. film. This is All right. Call it four. Susan, you need to go to your meeting. So. Yeah. Or so, I have a meeting, but I need to get something to eat before then. So, Susan, yeah, here's just handy dandy downy thingy. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll come over. Okay, I'll leave. Oh. I'll put it on the porch. Okay, let me. Well, okay, I guess we, 
Just put it on the porch because I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go put something in the oven and then I'll come over and I'll pick it up off your porch. Okay. All right. I'm recording right. this, guys. Bye, Mary. Bye. Okay. Bye, Mary. Bye, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Tamberly like, next week with your daughter. Okay. Yeah, we're dying to hear. What uh, yeah, Tamberly. Send everything over to Michaela if you haven't already. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Anything for Michaela? Send to Tamberly. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yeah.